Hello everyone, Caillou here with uh, Ricky, and today we're going to be commentating Losers Semifinals of the Revolution World Championships number 3. This is actually a repeat of an upper bracket match. It's Epid on Esper Enchantress Control versus Cool Beans on Mono Green Ruins. Last time, yeah. Epid took this 2-0, um, but uh, Cool Beans has made uh, kind of a, a heroic uh, loser's run to make it back here. And this is you know, a particularly important match because whoever wins this is going to face off against Ricky in loser's, sem uh, in losers finals. So what are your thoughts uh, on this, this matchup? I'm not going to hide my uh, biases. I'm rooting for Cool Beans because I do not want to face the Esper Enchantment matchup. See, and oh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not going to hide my biases. I'm rooting for Epid because I don't want to... If, if Cool Beans plays you and wins, I don't want to play Cool Beans in final. Because I think that um, Epid's deck is actually loaded with a decent amount of... Like, we're seeing Omen of Slaughter here as, uh, as like, a two-mana removal option, which is pretty... Oh, Epid's keeping five with a one-lander? That is, I was going to say Epid has a pretty decent chance in this matchup, but that is really bad. Meanwhile, Cool Beans has their strongest card in Relentless Woods in their hand, and Epid has no way to stop it. Um, but Don't worry, Epid just needs to top deck lands. If Epid top decks lands, this is actually pretty decent. Like I think you bottom Benthalos here, and then double Omen of the Slaughter, Founding of the Twelve gives you blockers. I think you honestly don't even play Phoenix's touch turn one, because you want to hold it... You want to have it as, no, maybe you do, do just play turn one, I don't know. But like, I don't know. Yeah, I think that this is a this is a pretty good hand if you had any lands at all. Yeah. Well, that, that means it's a, good, it's a good sign for Cool Beans winning game one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially Restless Woods plus Twin Blade Gates is, is pretty backbreaking. Um, uh, so what what's the curve looking like for Cool Beans? I mean, you just go Restless Woods on two. I think you actually take, you play Restless Woods on three as well. I think you take, you don't actually play the Ardent Ascetic, and then turn four, you play Ardent Ascetic, and then uh, you can animate Twin Blade Gates. It immediately gets, uh, uh, it gets four plus one plus one counters because wait four, yeah, because double Restless Woods, and then Re Restless Woods counts whenever a land you control becomes a creature, so it also counts. Uh, it, it doesn't just trigger once. So Haven of the Wild Ones becomes a creature, puts a plus, oh, puts right. two plus one plus one counters on each land. Twin Blade Gates becomes a creature, puts two plus one plus one counters on each land, and then Twin Blade Gates swings in for uh, as a five five double striker. Jesus. So that's yeah. A... Restless Woods puts a counter on each land you control, not just the animated ones. Holy crap! Yeah, that that card's uh, bu busted. Yeah, it, I think it, the the main thing is that it was. It was put into the format assuming stuff like what uh, BLR's land animation is like, right? Where you're paying an upfront cost to do the animation either through man lands or stuff that animates lands but takes up a card and therefore has room for interaction. Um, yeah, and usually it only animates once. It doesn't, or I guess it, well, the cards that animate lands animate at once. The man lands animate multiple times, but yeah, yeah. that point still stands. Yeah. It costs a lot more to animate lands. Yeah, with the spell charge lands, all of a sudden, you're getting land animation for effectively free for playing your other spells. So, yeah, Epid is thinking... Epid bottoms the Phoenix's touch. That is interesting. I honestly think that I would have... If you were choosing to do this, I feel like I would have kept the second founding and bottomed Benthalos instead. I think it's because Epid's just going for broke here, right? Right, but even, but, that... but even then, I think that with Benth the only thing you would copy with Founding or with Benthalos is Founding, and then I think. Can't you copy Omen of Slaughter? No, because uh, Benthalos only copies white or blue enchantments. Wait, it does. I I was playing around the wrong things then, <laughs> in my matches. And Epid is punished. Doesn't hit the second land. This well, is... not much they could do. Yeah, this is pretty brutal. I think that honestly, I would have. I think I honestly would have mulled to four if I was Epid rather than risk the one. I guess you have double omen and founding, but uh, this is pretty dicey. Um, and now Beans uh... has uh, Beans has just good options here. You just play out the Restless Woods and, and kind of just go to town. 
and then ta- and Bean's top picks at, at Testament Hill, so is actually going to get triple Restless Woods triggers. Oh, ugh! And Haven of the Wild Ones gets spell charge itself. Oh, this is disgusting. Actually, okay, that's another three drop. I think this game is uh, kind of an unfortunate one to be commentating because there isn't much to say. I think I think we are honestly just looking at game two here. Uh, does the matchup uh, whose matchup gets better post board? Um, I think that. Cool Beans' matchup gets significantly better. They bring in six pieces of uh, enchantment destruction. Epid's, I think Epid's game plan is pretty, is good enough main, but uh, also I lied. This Twin Blade Gates is actually going to be attacking for way more because I forgot it gets spell, ch- even if it doesn't attack this turn, it's getting spell charged this turn. Okay. Jeez. So, so yeah, now... Uh, Hmm. It's tapping Testament Hill, playing Imposing Oddity for one. The Which beat... also spell charges, and well, there we go. That's a really unfortunate game one for Epid. Yeah, and I think that that's really bad because it squanders the play. Like, Epid's big advantage coming into this matchup was being on the play in in game one, which means that Epid can get under, or like can, can get uh, interaction online like on a, on a reasonable curve, which is pretty important given that like Cool Beans has eight one drops that are pretty decent against uh, Epid's deck, or or so yeah. I think that yeah, this is this is not uh, this is not how you want to start off the, the match for sure. Um, yeah, certainly. Now speaking of boarding, let's bring bring over the deck lists here. Um, cool Beans just brings in. Uh, three new growth, three reclaimed by nature. I don't think you want crown guard, song graveyards, or keening bell towers here. Like maybe no, the so big, maybe just... the bell towers, but I think that you honestly, no, are, you're course. trying, you're, I think you're trying to be aggressive. So I think you want to just get under with stuff like new growth and reclaimed by nature. Um, yeah, just bringing all your instruct, bringing all your artifact hate. And then if you're, Ep- uh, well, what does Epid even bring? I don't think you bring anything in. If you, you bring be, be clear. Uh, never mind. They, it, it. it their runes hitting the runes won't help because all their runes are lands. Uh, yeah. yeah, maybe br- do you bring in drift off? Actually, you you may you might bring in you might bring in yeah. I think maybe drift off and like you take out path of phoenix maybe and you bring in yeah. I think you maybe take out the path of phoenixes and bring in two banished to the isles or maybe one banished to the isle one drift off. That actually makes a lot of sense because you need removal for stuff like stensider's acolyte. Um. Right. And, and the ruins themselves, obviously. So, so yeah. but like a lot more mind because you know, I think Epid's deck main is pretty decent. But e- Epid keeps a hand with no early game interaction. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so Epid is keeping. Oh, whoops. Yeah. So this is. I hesitate to call this a bad. I, I guess Epid might be gun shy after last time. I guess what you do is, um, you yeah you 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 play Founding of the Twelve, then you Benthalos copy Founding of the Twelve. And then you just hope that, but you don't have any ways to trigger Founding of the Twelve, which is kind of the issue here. You're meanwhile... just hoping for good draws. Well, that's not one. Yeah. Meanwhile, Cool Beans with Stensider's Acolyte turn one means that they can just drop. Uh, they can... turn three. They're threatening. So next turn you just play Alranta. Turn three you use Stensider's to animate Twin Blade Gates and you swing for eight. And yeah. Oh, wait, Stensider. Let's just straight animate a land and hold. Huh. I didn't realize there was this much uh, runes interaction in the format. I guess rune synergy. Yeah. D- do you see? You see why you shouldn't have been hoping for a cool beans to win. You shouldn't have been hoping for this. Okay, but, but at least it's no. The, the game's more fun if I play against cool beans because you know, you know I can that's... very call Heli on them, and I can't very call Heli on their enchantments. You know what? That's true. But also, look at this. Cool Beans uh, is going to again next turn. Cool Beans is attacking for ten with Twin Blade Gates. For ten. It doesn't have trample. It, it's it's fine. Epic can chump. Uh, yeah, I guess Epic. I guess Epic can chump. But uh, there's also Alranta Unleashed does have trample. So that's not going to animate until they get six mana. Wait, wait, never mind. Uh, well, at least it's a 4-4, four, four, okay? Th- th- that's fine, right? It's only a 4-4 four, four if you animate it with Acolyte. But, but Restless, if you animate it with uh, with Acolyte, uh, it still triggers 
restless wood. So it is a five. So it's actually a five-five trample. Ah. Uh. Okay, another founding of the twelve for Epid. That's actually pretty decent. You, honestly, I think that you you play a land, you hold up Benthalos, you Benthalos copy founding of the twelve. Next turn, you play founding of the twelve, get two mm -hmm. humans, and then from then on, you are. Yeah, from then on, you have, uh, every time you cast a non-creature skull, you spell you're getting three chump blockers, which is pretty decent. Unfortunately, Alranta Unleashed makes your life kind of annoying, but yeah. Yeah, you just have to blow it up at instant speed somehow. Mm -hmm. Wait, when a room animates, it's still a land, right? So it's it dodges yeah, it, all the... Yeah, it dodges all of the O-rings. So, But Epit has Seal Away, uh, which uh, will be able to grab it. But again, needs to actually draw that as the issue. So if Cool Beans wins, are you going to be playing uh, Losers Finals right after this? Maybe. Oh, man. <laughs> so right now, I guess Cool Beans is trying to decide whether to Alranta or... Hmm, I guess could also be worried about Seal Away. So might just be looking to uh, like play Twin Blade Gates... Like, okay, well, okay, a line I could see here. Oh, no, okay, it's going to play the Alranta. And it's just going to Stensiders it. Okay, okay, that makes sense. And it, Stensider untaps? Yeah. Uh-huh. So. Huh. So this is, uh, I think that this is Did the it's... right play from Cool Beans just to get through, uh, like, the blockers that Epid can present. Why is Alranta also untap your lands? Why does Al oh yeah? Why does Alranta do that? Uh, it's I think Alranta is kind of a silly design, honestly. Uh, yeah, why why does it allow you to untap permanent instead of just stuff that's been animated? Don't ask me. I think that Alranta as a design is a, is more than a little silly in terms of it. I think it assumes a lot of like even without the the land animation present, I think it is a little. It 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 does a little too much for for the opportunity cost. Uh, no point in blocking here, right? Because it's wait, no. If it connects, then you just Cool Bean just untaps their entire board and then gets the deciders again. Right, but right, you can't. You, but you can't playing... stop. But you can't stop that because it has trample. Well, if you throw Benthos in front of it, it only gets untapped three things, which means that they oh, would no mean... that does Yeah, that, that doesn't help. It, it yeah, it really doesn't help. Um, they, I think that you have to keep Benthos back as another two. Uh, as another two power to potentially, because uh, okay, because if you because here's the scenario, right? You if you draw another two drop enchantment next turn, you can founding of the twelve. You get two one ones. You play another two drop or one drop, or you play a phoenix's touch, let's say, and then uh, you get three one ones. Then you have enough chump blocker, enough power to kill. An animated Alranta unleashed. Um, That's going to work as long as it doesn't get animated again by Restless Woods. Wait, no, Restless Woods is going to trigger on the already animated land, right? Right. So it's going to put counters on Alranta even if it's already animated. So that, right, but then so Alranta is going to grow. Oh yeah, Alranta is going to become a six six. Um, so, but that means if if Epid does have that, then oh, uh, you know what's going to, what's going to happen next turn is that Cool Beans is going to play Twin Blade Gates and Forgotten Cultivator and trigger Restless Woods twice, and it becomes a seven seven. I mean, yeah, I can just play uh, I can just play Ascetic right now. Wait, no, Stensiders act like wears off at end of turn, so Alranta goes back to being a base five five. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I I honestly at this point I don't I don't even know. Okay, Ifara is not good here. That is in fact bad, because you need like you need to play founding. You need to play the third founding here. So I think you play new divide tapped, play founding, get your two one ones, and kind of just. You do get storm scraper next turn at least. I guess, but okay, okay. I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this. Stensider takes. Um, can you animate twin blade gates, and also Stensiders next? Turn? No, just... I guess not. <clears throat> I guess not. Okay, okay. So there's that at least. Oh wait, no, you can play. Okay, wait, no. If Cool Beans, okay. So if Cool Beans top decks a land, here's how it goes. Cool Beans top decks a land, or doesn't even need to top deck a land. If Cool Beans, Cool Beans can play a land, Forgotten Cultivator, um, hit a land off the Forgotten Cultivator, Stensider's Acolyte, and then Twin Blade Gates will get uh spell charged. 
and then Alranta, if you and then you animate Alranta Unleashed. That's three plus one plus one counters on all of your lands. So Alranta becomes an eight eight trample. Oh. Well, yeah. Where is the extra? So that's six mana in total to do, right? Where yeah. is the six mana coming from? Yeah, there's the forest in hand, forgotten cultivator. Oh wait, iron aesthetic. Right, you get yeah. extra land plays. I yeah. forgot. Oh. I forgot about iron aesthetic because the I stopped playing it after it got nerfed. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace to. Honestly, no, not rest in peace. Rest, rest in, uh, rest in agony. But it's a, uh, it's still quite good as is. Um, yeah, Epid's thinking. I mean, I guess is is Epid thinking? Do I just slam Ephara here? I don't think that you can afford to slam Ephara is the thing. But I guess maybe. Yeah, I don't know. It's better than nothing. I mean, it, it, you're almost to an animating this thing. I, I guess. I mean, my main thought is that you want. Like, you need the tokens to sur to potentially survive this turn. Well, do you, like... Yeah. If you try to get tokens down, you're just playing to lose, right? You just slam Afara, hope your opponent doesn't have lethal next turn, and then try to draw with Afara. Because if you're just trying to chomp your opponent's th things, it's you're still losing. You, you need to get Afara down to dig for st an actual out, I, I feel like. Claimed, reclaimed by nature. Very sad. Okay, I guess... I guess... Yeah, I don't. I don't know how much it. Like, I see what you're. I see what you're saying, but also I think that the double twin blade gates plus Alranta on board, uh, definitely makes me feel like, because 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 at that point a single, three drop is giving them, two giant double strikers. Yeah, I mean, does Cool Beans have lethal? If, if it doesn't play founding, because Beneth so Benethos blocks one of the twin blade gates, the other one gets through, Alratha gets through. It's not lethal just yet, right? So, like, if it was safe playing the Farah there. Yeah. That's okay, that's fair, that's fair. Okay, if is going to play the Flick Forgotten Cultivator. Okay, Cool Beans isn't going to swing with twin blade gates this turn. Okay, if it doesn't have any one man interaction, so it isn't just resolving this. Oh, he doesn't even need to animate Alranta. Cause, oh yeah, yeah because Alrantha is already a creature. Oh, I think Alrantha should explode. What a card. Okay. Oh, and it's going to keep... Uh, it's going to keep the... It is a creature right now. Until the end of your next turn. Yep. <clears throat> Wait, then what about the Twin Blade Gates? Did, did they... They weren't, they, were, not... they, were, they weren't spell charged. So they didn't, they didn't become... So they, did, so they didn't become creatures to stop being creatures. I see. And now Cool Beans asks a question. I'm like, <laughs> look, I, I have patience sometimes, but come on, dog. <laughs> okay, yeah. <clears throat> okay, and so there's uh, the land, yeah. There's the lands. So what was the play you were saying right now? Uh, you play the lands, you activate Acolyte on one of the Twin Blade Gates or something? Well, I wasn't... I was originally thinking activate the uh, acolyte on Alranta, but then I forgot Alranta is already animated. So at this point, you just swing in with Alranta. And it keeps the twin blade gates activated. Uh, does Epid have board wipes in their deck anywhere? Epid has board wipes, but uh, it's not a hard board wipe. It's a minus three minus three, which doesn't do oh. anything here. Because again, the twin blade gates are going to grow uh, to four fours. Or one is going to be a four four, the other is going to be a five five. That yeah, that that seems pretty painful. I think at this point you kind of you are in in an unenviable situation of you need to draw seal away for Alranta unleashed and then hope and yeah you need that is that is Epid's only out. Epid needs to draw seal away for Alranta unleashed. Okay, is going to Stensider's acolyte to get back the land from grave. Wait, this thing lets you get back land from grave? I, I thought it was only from hand. You can put a land card from your hand or graveyard onto the battlefield tab. Uh, huh. Why am I not playing this card? <laughs> the, presumably because you want to keep your turn one free to play tapped lands. But uh, um, Yeah, but... Oh, uh, well, that's... That's a lot of power on board. Just a little. But main the main thing is the 9-9 Alranta Unleashed. And then I think, again, if you're Epid, I don't think you can... Uh, and this is so annoying, because Alranta just untaps, is going to untap everything. And then, do you have... I don't think Cool Beans has, like, an out at this point, is kind of the problem. 
Uh, right now, I'm looking through my deck list to see what cards I have to blow up land. <laughs> Uh, I have Fury Call Helion. I mean, Fury Call 5. I mean, that that that, that does blow up lands. Uh, is that literally all my inter Yeah, that's the only thing I have that answers this sort of situation. Huh. That might be a problem for me in, in my matchup. Mm -hmm. And I think, okay, I think part of it is also that, like, you can remove the land animation engines, right? Like, if you remove Stinsider's Acolyte, if you remove Restless Woods, this actually is, like, a lot less. If, if Epid had interaction on curve, like, if Epid had gone, like, Omen of Slaughter turn two into, like, a turn three, like, an O-Ring, all of a sudden this board gets, like, a lot less problematic. It's just Epid kept kept a hand with... Ep Epid's hands both games have been pretty awful for a deck that has eight two-mana removal spells and a further, yeah. and a further like... Yeah, Epid's deck is built to the brim with interaction, and, and Epid instead kept hands that were like... The five. The last game was kind of unfortunate, right? But this game, it's like, I know that founding is good, but also you need to have interaction. Like, this is the type of hand which I think you keep against other interactive decks, where you're like, okay, I'm just going to get under them and overwhelm them with value. But then, yeah. <clears throat> is, no, Epid's thinking about block... Yeah, there's yeah. no point in blocking anything here. Yeah. You need to save your blockers for potential lethal with like like if if there's if there's lethal angles with like cultivator and the other ones. But okay, so is going to keep the the gates oh, is tapping them? Oh, I think uh, Epi, for Beans, mana. The... No, 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 no. Beans is thinking is okay, is, yeah, Beans is not going to animate those. They're playing around in board wipe. But what board wipe? If it doesn't have any Wrath, right? They only have Chronicle of Extinction. Right. I think uh I think Epid's all or Beans is also actually Okay, so this is actually an interesting thing. Beans is actually playing around Epid making a bunch more blockers to so because if 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 Alranta Unleashed untaps the twin blade gates and they become they can't stop being creatures. So but next turn uh, and so therefore you can't get more Restless Woods triggers off of them. Um, ah, I see. So now this way, uh, Cool Beans can play Imposing Oddity X equals 3 and then get two more Restless Woods triggers. And also on end step, uh, is going to stint Sider's Acolyte to untap one, uh, probably like one of the random like forests or whatever, make that uh, a creature, and then get more Restless Woods triggers. Yeah. I see. Well, Cool Beans, you lost connection. I mean, that's one way for FA to win this game. <laughs> Me DDoSing my opponent. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. okay. Okay, so literally, I think the literal only out is Seal Away, and that only helps for a single turn because Epid has... Oh, wait, no, that doesn't even... Because Epid has Reclaimed by Nature, so how does the... Tr okay, yeah, that's... Yeah, okay. That's just that's just dead on board. That is That is so unfortunate. Triple founding of the 12, and... Just all creatures in hand. So yeah, Epid is like ultra dead, super dead, extremely dead. Deader Unless... than dead. Yeah. They might even be undead at this point. Do they? Okay, I'm trying to think through. Can they animate 100? Okay, actually, maybe not. Okay, okay. Can animate 100-handed pillars because they have 5 devotion on board, so 100-handed pillars cost 3 to animate? So can animate... They can play out Ephara, right? Yeah, okay, they can also play Afara as an indestructible blocker, but... So yeah, you play Gloom Cover... No, but then if you play Afara... You, you, that's, that's enough devotion, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So you can animate 100 handed for 1. Okay, that's actually... Yeah, okay, okay, okay. So, so it's Epid... Yeah, okay, okay. And that's and that's 10 toughness between there, so that you can... So you can... Yeah, okay, okay. That is actually... That keeps Epid on the board. And importantly... <laughs> After animating hundred handed pillars, even if it gets assigned damage to die, you can benthalos you you'll have benthalos mana still. So you can benthalos and then copy another founding of the twelve. So that if you hit a non creature spell next turn, you go crazy. Epid is talking as though they've already lost. Epid, so. play your out. You're not dead yet. Don't concede until you until your <laughs> don't, don't concede attack. until you see the whites of their eyes. Uh, no, the whites of your eyes, I mean. Mm. It, 
the other ways around. Um, is Epid con okay? Epid's conceived. Hey, at least it's it's a it's less bad than mess literally missing lethal on my last possible turn in game one against you. Mm -hmm. But still, like, yeah, I that, that exact card, popped that exact card to get lethal. Completely missed it. <laughs> But yeah, Cool Beans gets the win in a convincing fashion in the run back. Mostly, but like... And now, again, Losers Finals. It's going to be uh, the Consonance deck versus uh, Mono Green Ruins. I honestly don't mind if I lose in, my, in the semifinals because that means I don't have to play your uh, the matchup against you again. I mind! And I, I mind! <laughs> you have to win so I don't have to play this deck. I don't want to play this deck. <laughs> You saw how that went when Epid had eight pieces of main. I only have two pieces of sideboard interaction against this deck. <laughs> just curse, just like hex them, M make them disconnect. Uh, I don't think there's a spell powerful enough for that. Okay, thanks everyone for watching. Um, yep. Ricky will not be back for uh, for the next match, but depending. But on I how might be back for the finals if that's how it turns out. <laughs> I hope it doesn't turn out that way. I hope that I hope that you were you, actually no. You record your own matches. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know what? That, so that's fine. It, I, either way, you'll be back for the finals. Um, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Caillou and Ricky signing out.